Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to this 2023 Lionsgate energy update. My name is Ona Christie, visionary artist and mystic oracle. And in this video, I'm going to share, first of all, a little bit about the Lionsgate and uh, what that means. Uh, the special significance of the 2023 Lionsgate, an, an Akashic message explaining the energies of the Lionsgate 2023 and a message from White Lion to uh, help us through this time, as well as the magic word that is the key to using lion energy in a positive way to create 5D heaven on earth. All right, so let's start with looking at the astrological significance of the Lion's Gate portal. What is it and why is it important? Okay, so the Lion's Gate is this period of time, right, which typically people think about it as the 8-8 or August 8th. And let me explain because it's a little more complex than that, okay? So the actual Lion's Gate refers to the heliacal rising of the star Sirius. And that means when a star first becomes visible on the eastern horizon before the sun rises, after there'll be a period of time where it's been obscured by the sun, and then you can start seeing it rising in the east again, that's called the heliacal rising. Okay, so the Lion's Gate has to do with when the star Sirius becomes visible again in the dawn. Okay, and that actual time of rising and the actual date depends on the latitude, so where you are on the earth, okay? Um, depending where you are, the event can happen as early as July 24th to as late as August 27th. So it's a big long window of time. Actually, the closer the poles you are, the later in the year it will occur. Okay, so throughout most of this event window, the sun is in the sign of Leo, which is why we call it the Lion's Gateway, okay? And Leo represents the self and the individual I, right? So it's a really significant time for personal development and empowerment, as well as the evolution of humanity as we collectively learn to navigate our individuality and its relationship to oneness, right? Okay, so, but the star series itself isn't really associated with lions. It's actually called the dog star. So maybe it would be just as appropriate to tune into dog energy at this time, but modern consciousness has really uh, glommed onto this lion energy and this is now the primary symbolic animal for this time of year. And I think there's good reason for that, okay, which we'll get into a little later in this video. Okay, so with all the stars in the sky, right, billions of stars, why so much hoopla over Sirius? Okay, well, Sirius is a very high vibrational star, and it has a huge amount of spiritual significance. Okay, it's considered the spiritual sun or the sun to our own sun. And the ancient Egyptians held Sirius in great high regard. They connected this star with the continuity of life and with human evolution. And there are many other traditions around the world that hold similar beliefs and, and hold the star Sirius with special reverence. For convenience, the Lion's Gate energy is celebrated globally on August 8th at, or 8 age. Okay, that doesn't mean that it's necessarily this is going to be the same as the astrological event, but there is power in human consciousness. And when with so much consciousness focused on this date, there's also a lot of power in numbers and the numerology of it. Okay, so this is a significant date, numerologically speaking, because the number of eight is associated with infinite abundance or with manifestation. So it fits with that creative energy that Sirius brings forward, right, the life wave. Okay, and then finally, the, both the ancient Egyptians and the Mayans celebrated the new year at this time, okay, as does the modern day galactic calendar or dream spell calendar, which is based on the Mayan, Mayan calendar. So personally, I have noticed that the energies of this portal seem to have a, an initiatory quality. So it feels to me what happens at this time is that we start getting all these light codes because it's the highest point of light, right? There's this huge amount of solar energy that comes in at this time that affects humanity. And it feels to me that, that um, after the Lionsgate closes, 
and we've received these light codes, right? These energies, then we have to start to uh, start to integrate them, and that that spurs us to move into this next karmic cycle of the year, in which we will be fully integrating these energies of this year and to prepare for the next cycle. Okay, um, so to me, it really makes sense to start the year at this time. Um, and I, I feel like there's a reason that these ancients uh, looked at this as, as the start of the new year. Okay, so, and also it's connected with the cycle of creation. I think I mentioned that, but um, for the Egyptians, it was when the Nile would flood and that was when all the fertility returned to the soil. Okay, so it's got this real connection with that sense of life. Okay, so what's the significance of the 2023 Lion's Gate in particular? To answer this question, I tuned into my Akashic guidance, and this is the message that I received. Okay, they said the spiritual war that has been taking place lar largely underground at this time is beginning to surface in human consciousness. The masses are starting to become aware of it. The Lion's Gateway marks the initiation point for a new and likely more pitched round of spiritual warfare. This is a war that is taking place at all levels within each individual, as well as the, in the collective and along many different 3D lines of division. There's no more room for compromise. There's no avoiding this. Sides must be chosen. Every choice has weight. Every choice helps to tip the balance one way or another, towards the dark or towards the light. Do not believe that you are only dark or only light. Every soul has a balance of both. This is true also of nearly every entity, social or religious group, political party, institution, etc. on the planet today. There will be an aspect of dark in every one. Do not be led astray thinking that your group is infallible or that an opposing group has no redeeming qualities. Keep your eyes and ears open and pay attention to frequency at all times. Ultimately, though, this war will be won or lost through actions and choices made by individuals. You may be fighting on multiple battlefields simultaneously. It is possible to make dark choices on one battlefield while choosing light on another. It is the aggregate of choices that will tip the balance. Again, do not be misled by propaganda or party line thinking. Every individual soul has the capacity for great good or great evil. You must learn to discern, but beware, things are not always as they seem. Okay, so there's a lot there, and I wanna look at a couple of the points here that they made. Um, uh, first of all, before that, uh, the way I'm seeing it this coming year, initiating right now in the 2023 Lionsgate, it represents a vital turning point in human evolution. It's a massive collective spiritual initiation that takes place as a result of a multitude of individual awakenings. I think that word individual is absolutely key. Okay, so humanity is a collective. We've got our back to the wall right now. Okay, evolutionarily, we are we have spent millennia becoming embodied, bringing our spirit down into the body. For the past two thousand years, we've been developing our individuality as human beings, and largely, this has happened through this three D might makes right paradigm. Okay, now in order to pass this initiation point that we're in right now. A critical mass of us has to learn to operate in harmony with each other without compromising our individuality, which means that we have to be both strong and dispassionate enough to maintain our boundaries and humble and compassionate enough to surrender to the higher consciousness that wants to move through us, okay? So I cannot stress enough that when I say spiritual warfare, when the higher guidance is referring to spiritual warfare, it's not what most people think, okay? This is a war that cannot be won with guns, bombs, sticks and stones, or even laws and re regulations. It can only be won through the raising of consciousness, and it has to happen first at the individual level, okay? So, <laughs> what happens in your own psyche, in your own healing, in your own awakening, it does make a huge difference, okay? Um, 
So when I call you a spiritual warrior, it's talking about your ability to rise above and your stick to itiveness, right? To keep fighting the good fight, but in a way that doesn't mean <laughs> to bring conflict, it means to actually find the truth within yourself. Okay, even though sometimes we find the truth, it 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 sparks conflict, right? Um, and we'll get into that in a bit. Okay, so this isn't about winning through conflict, because that's impossible. All conflict does is keep you at the 3D level, right? Which is the level of conflict. So this is about rising above conflict. It's about facing the conflict and, you know, sticking to our truth, which might actually invite conflict, but it's about moving through that and rising above it, okay? Because if we keep fighting and fighting and fighting on the same level, nothing changes, okay? So it's about literally rising above the conflict by raising your own vibration and creating harmony within yourself, okay? Um, so remember the law of correspondence as within, so without, it's an inner battle first and foremost, and it's not about fighting the dark, but learning to see it and acknowledge it and neutralize it, okay? Because the dark's about fighting. It's really about just seeing it and saying, hey, you know, here's my boundaries. As you create a harmony within, the outer world will start to reflect harmony back at you until eventually the conflict simply dissolves. But until then, there's a lot of boundary holding to be doing, okay? So the thing is, this is an initiation. So we have to expect that we will be tested. So we're starting out in 3D, okay? This is where our normal life is, right? All of us have at least one foot in 3D, okay? And that is the plane of conflict. So when we start out on this path of being a spiritual warrior, at first, it might feel like you're attracting conflict into your life. And this is what we call the dark night of the soul, right? When we start to realize that we've been not in our truth, we've been living a lie, and we start to make those adjustments, okay? That's because we're dealing with harmonics. If you've been tooling along in 3D and you're vibrating at that 3D level, and even though it's painful, you have found a comfort zone there, okay? So you're actually harmonizing with that wonky 3D energy, okay? Um, it, it doesn't feel good, but it's like you have figured out a way to harmonize with it. So as you begin to shift into being in greater resonance with your higher self, a greater resonance with the greater universe, you're shifting into a different harmonic, a higher harmonic, okay? And at first, that's going to seem really discordant, <laughs> you know, maybe to you and certainly to many of those around you, because it's not going to be harmonizing with the 3D stream of consciousness that you're used to, that they're used to, okay, that they think is normal. And there will be parts of yourself and certainly other people who are going to be very tuned into that 3D and they're going to feel like this is a problem. You're, it's a problem that you are not harmonizing with it, okay? And they're going to blame you for creating disharmony, okay? They may even start to attack you. Or there may be parts of yourself that are like, you know, what are you doing? You know, that's crazy. Or, um, you know, that are just resistant. Um, uh, you may feel addictions, procrastination, all sorts of stuff, right? Getting in the way of your stepping into your higher vibration, okay? So hello, conflict. 3D is going to want to fight this war on the 3D plane, okay? Because that's the only way it can win. So we can't go there, right? But we can't give up and go back and we can't fight this by fighting the way what we're used to on 3D. So what can we do? Well, there's where, there's where lion medicine can come in and help us, okay? So let's take a look at the significance of lion energy, okay? So as mentioned, the lion spirit animal represents the self, okay? And specifically, the self is an individual, okay? And, and so this is really important because it's got its light and its dark side, okay? Uh, the light side of lion, which is represented at its peak by the white lion, right, is, is um, 
going to be representing or symbolizing the higher self, right? The Christ essence and the dark side of lion. Okay. Uh, sort of like the bad King and the lion King, right? Is representing the ego. Okay. And so, and I just mentioned the lion King and this wraps right around with this whole message here. The lion has also always been the symbol of Kings. Okay. What is a king or a queen? King or a queen is a sovereign individual, okay? One who is slave to none. One who answers only to themselves, or if you're in your higher essence, to the God or the divine within yourself, right? Okay, so this is comes down to the king is going to answer only to themselves. If it's a negative king, if it's a bad king, if it's an evil king, it's going to be answering to the ego. If it's a higher uh, um, exalted king, a divine king, it's going to be answering to creator, to God, to the Christ essence. Okay, so in that positive aspect, okay, the qualities of the sovereign king, lion, right? Courage, strength, protection, truth, justice, okay? And king is the one that makes the laws and that enforces the laws. So this is really super important. This is where spiritual law comes in, that it's so important to be aware of spiritual law and how that works, like the natural law of the universe, okay? So think of the good king archetype. The king, the role of the king is to serve and protect the people, right? Um, and to create harmony and prosperity both within the kingdom and mutually protective peace, prosperity, and harmony with neighboring countries, okay? And that also represents um, creating this inner sense of harmony. And when we do that, it's naturally so much easier to have peace and to have harmony with those around us, okay? In its negative aspect, though, the king and the lion represents bloodthirstiness and tyranny, okay? And also this, especially the lion, because the male lion, he can come in and if, if, um, if a male lion comes in and forces its way into a pride, it will actually eat the children, you know, it'll eat the young ones. That's part of the shadow side of lion is eating the future. Okay, is destroying um, the, the, the future sense and sometimes literally the children. Okay, um, so the negative aspect we're talking the ego, um, ego energy, right? It's the individual who's only interested in service to self. Okay, or the evil king archetype, the king that rules by force, who enslaves, okay, and the who's uh, both enslaving his own people and who's also always trying to conquer and enslave the countries around him, the neighboring kingdoms, okay? So we see this on the individual level, the ego, which, you know, we all know we're so miserable, right? When we are led by the ego, it just leads to misery, even if the ego leads to great riches, but it's not any kind of real enjoyment of, of the riches. It's just a hoarding, right? Um, and it's also going to lead to conflict without, um, you know, outside of oneself and also, it will kind of impinge itself on others' right to freedom, okay? So the key right now is to recognize and realize three things. One, a kingdom needs strong boundaries, okay? Hugely important. A good, good king cannot rule effectively without knowing where the border of his kingdom is, right? So that he knows whether he's using his power in a way that is divinely guided, okay? He has to go know where the boundaries are and he has to protect those boundaries to keep the kingdom secure, okay? So like a strong lion, he has to vigorously protect his territory, all right? And what is rightfully his. So that's number one, strong boundaries. Number two, um, really important to realize this is first and foremost representing the spiritual kingdom within okay that's where it starts even though we're going to see reflections of this in our lives in our neighbors lives in 
you know, the way things unfold politically and all this stuff, but it starts as a spiritual dynamic within you as an individual, within me as an individual, within each of us, each of us as individuals, okay? So each one of us has to become our own inner king or queen, and then one has to make sure that that inner king or queen is in service to the creator, right? Okay, so that's number two. So we have strong boundaries. We have to, you know, recognize it's the kingdom within that it's it's um, an individual initiation that we're dealing with. And then number three, to, to be aware that there's something called the divine right of kings. Okay, this means that the king has a direct connection with God, and so his subjects must obey. Okay, in the 3D world, this has been used to justify the enslavement of people who were bound to obey the will and the law of the king. Okay, so this is actually an inversion of the actual divine law and the divine sovereign, right, um, of, of kings. It boils down to the individual, right, but it hinges on each individual really being that true divine sovereign within them okay and i feel like we're at this point in uh, the evolution of humanity where there's a critical mass of people who are ready willing and able to step into that divine sovereign kingship within okay um but we're going to look into what that's going to take okay so as we move into 5D consciousness, it's becoming more and more clear that the real king, the real sovereign being is the higher self, okay? Each individual has a direct connection to God. We are all sovereign beings subject only to divine will, which is reflected not in human law, but in natural law, okay? We are all kings and queens by divine right, which means it's our personal responsibility to create harmony within ourselves as well as with our neighbors. And a key part of that is to create strong personal boundaries. Okay, back to the boundaries. Okay, and this word responsibility. Okay, right now there's there's a trend where people are thinking they're creating boundaries. And I'm seeing this a lot in the general population, also in, in the new age circles. People think that they have strong boundaries and think that they are reinforcing those boundaries when what they're really doing is trying to pawn off their own self-responsibility for uh, um, building harmony and uh, prosperity within themselves and, and to blame others if they're not experiencing that and to kind of pawn off the responsibility to somebody else. I see this on both sides of the political spectrum, okay? both sides. And so, and then it's my right to dictate that you have to change your behavior. Okay, this has got to stop. We have to really look at, okay, what are our rights and, you know, to understand that we, each of us has to take absolute personal responsibility for our own health, wealth, and well-being. And it's through doing that that it's going to expand and help others, okay? So uh, trying to be the savior to others often will backfire because that's, that's actually impinging on their own responsibility. We can't do this by taking responsibility for somebody else's, you know, initiations, Every individual has to go through their own initiations, and we can't pawn off our responsibility for our own initiations. So if we are going through challenges, it's our responsibility to, you know, whether to ask for help or to realize that we need help. But it, it, as a fine line between kind of standing up for your rights and expecting that everybody's going to shift everything that they're doing to pacify you, right? Um, so it's, it's a learning curve, right? So about lion medicine, if you'd like to learn more about that, I will be reposting my lion spirit animal video very soon. I took it down because there were some inaccuracies. 
um, I will be uh, reposting that really soon. So watch for that if you like more insight into lion energy and how this all relates to Lionsgate. But for now, I want to explore one cryptic saying from the Master Yeshua about the lion. Okay, and I will be sharing a message afterwards that I received directly from the lion spirit to help us through this time. Okay, so in the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus says, blessed is the lion which the man eats, and the lion will become man, and cursed is the man whom the lion eats, and the lion will become man. Okay, so this is open to interpretation, but here's my take on it. I believe he's talking about the mastery of the bestial nature within a human being. And um, it's, it's really talking about the shadow, right? Okay, so basically what he's saying is that like it or not, you have this lion energy within you. We all do, okay? So we have a choice. You can eat the lion, okay? Choice number one, you can eat the lion. That means to integrate the lion energy within oneself. And that means acknowledging that you have this beast within you, that we have the capacity to be dangerous and to actually fully own that fierce, wild energy, not to repress it, but to acknowledge it as part of you and to be conscious that that energy is there and that you're capable of using it, okay? The king does need an army as well as a, as a diplomatic branch because it's always a possibility that one of his neighbors may go crazy, may go nuts, may go fascist or whatever and decide to invade. Okay, if your defensive force is strong and that does include this wild, fierce energy, right? If your defensive force is strong, most of the time, no one will challenge you, but you need to be in full consciousness of this primal power to be the master of it, putting it in service to your higher self and allowing it to work for you and where appropriate, but not allowing it to eat you, not allowing it to usurp your higher consciousness, okay? He's warning that this fierce wild energy, the energy of the wild beast, if you're not strong enough or if you're not aware enough, it can eat you up. Okay, because it's so connected to the survival instincts, its base nature is to react reflexively in the manner of an animal whenever it senses a challenge. And when that happens, you lose your humanity. Essentially, you become a beast in the guise of a man. So beware that energy is within you. You may not recognize it. Okay, so watch for feeling triggered because that is a symbol that the beast is awakening. Okay, and then you can choose to use that energy of the beast, but you got to bring your rational mind into it, okay, and master the beast. Okay, that energy is within you, it's within me, it's within your spouse, your friends, your neighbors, it's within all of us, okay, and if it's not recognized and properly managed, if it's allowed to take over, or if it's repressed or denied, it will eventually take over and run rampant and not in a good way because it's connected to 3D energy, okay. So that's why I tuned into the lion spirit and asked for a message to support us through this time. And so that's why I specifically chose to connect with the white lion. Okay, the spirit of the white lion symbolizes the highest spiritual vibration of the lion spirit. And I believe it resonates really strongly also with the energy of the star Sirius. Okay, so here's the practical wisdom that the white lion has to offer us to help us to master the beast within ourselves. And when we encounter that beast reflected at us, whether within us or reflected at us from outside the world, here's what they suggested. They said, the power is in your presence. It is not what you do or even what you believe, but in the in eternal beingness of your existence. Until you are called to action, be still. Until you are called to speak, be silent. When the time for action comes, act decisively without fear or hesitation. When the time comes to speak, roar. You are accountable for future generations, not your own. Let your children's children be your judge. You are the torchbearer, the light of the world. The time has come to shine. Okay. Um, so I promised a magic word. Okay. 
And in so many fairy tales, the hero is a prince and he's the future king, right? He's heir to the kingdom, but he must first win it back from some evil challenger, okay? Often he's going to be given gifts along the way, special magic talismans, or sometimes it's a magic word that's the key to the kingdom. In this case, we do have a magic word, okay? It's a simple two-letter word, and you may have already guessed what it is. That magic word is no. Okay, it's the most important word we can learn to say because it's what allows us to hold those boundaries. Okay, it's what allows us to build those strong spiritual boundaries that will enable us to create our kingdom on heaven, of heaven on earth. But remember, it's a two edged sword. Okay, you can use no in a forceful way to try to force others, you know, uh, um, from being their true self, or you can use it to defend your own space right um this is my space this is my body you can't touch it right this is my mind it does not belong to you it's my mind okay this is my soul this is my heart this is my direct connection to spirit and you are not allowed to interfere with that no okay and that goes for that little voice within that's trying to take you down first, okay? That's the first place where we have to say that no, okay? And only then to the outside. Okay, so in this world where it seems the big corporations and governments and the elite infrastructures hold all the power, it's easy to feel hopeless, like nothing you or I can do will make a difference, but nothing could be further than the truth. Ultimately, whether or not the human spirit prevails at this time comes down to individual choice, individual courage, and the strength to do the right thing in the face of massive resistance from both within and without. Okay, every choice you make matters, every choice. So I wanna share one last thing about lion. The power of the lion is the power of the heart. It's the power of the heart that, like the famous King David against Goliath, can overcome all odds. Keep working with the heart. Anytime you feel afraid, hopeless, or overcome with darkness, come to stillness and bring your breath back to the heart. The heart is the magic den of the white lion. It's the portal through which you can access all light and all beings of light the light that can vanquish any darkness. It will lift you up in humanity with it. So thank you, light warriors. Every little choice tips the balance. If this message resonates with you, be sure to like and comment on this video. These are little choices, little actions that will help it reach more people. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you really enjoy this messaging, consider joining my private group of Spoken Earth Ministries. It's free to join. The description link is be below. And remember, you were born to be free.